Hello, my name is Anthony Shivkumar, and in today's video, we're going to do the ADS1234, which is a 24 bit analog to digital converter by Texas Instruments. We're going to do part two, where we have, you know, got the fabricated board. We're going to basically, you know, put the connections on, connect the device, and see if we can, you know, get some readings. So the ADS1234, the board that I'm using, is a, is a 24 bit analog to digital converter. And from what I understand that this is a good predict, this is a good uh, component for me to get the sensor readings from a load cell. And that's what we're gonna do today. So in part one, I tried to design the schematic for this particular board. And generally speaking, there were a few issues. And how do I know there were a few issues? Because when I went and spoke to the Texas Instrument Forum, which is something that I'd recommend anyone who's designing, that it's imperative that whenever you're taking a new component or a component that you are not very familiar with, I'm not a big fan of just going online and seeing what everybody else is using and just downloading it and then trying to, you know, get my information from forums. I think that's very dangerous for your knowledge. Um, it might be good to get and understand, you know, some small, if there's a small little knowledge gap, yeah, sure, you know, some online resources can help clear that out. But especially when it comes to doing right from, you know, designing the circuit board, fabricating the device, making and making sense of you know what the new component and its functionality is who would know better than the engineers at the manufacturer um, which is Texas instruments in this particular case so I created a forum called minimum circuitry to get this working and I basically spoke to the engineer out there I basically shared my designs they basically corrected and said you know this is what it should be doing uh, this is a better way of designing it and I based on their recommended standards and the way they recommended how to design I basically designed the board and this is why this particular part two has got a little bit more improvement than part one. So part one, you know, where I basically made a rough sketch and I made a video. Part two, I basically got it reevaluated and re, um, what do you say, got it uh, checked by the engineers at Texas Instruments in the forum. It's public. You can actually go online and check it out. And then this is where we are. So I have now fabricated the board. And what I have over here is the fabricated board. And this is without the without any soldering done so i got the board i got the board quite a while ago this was not the issue the main issue was you know that this particular device was constantly out of stock uh all the time and because it was out of stock all the time it took it, i got it around you know late december and then i had other products going on so i couldn't really fabricate it uh that was one of the reasons all right so in here we have uh, my ADS1234, which is now connected. As you can see, it's a little messy. It's connected, it'll be connected to a load cell. And what we have over here is a multimeter that is basically connected right at one of those points. So I'm gonna bring up the schematic and then we're gonna have a look at exactly what I mean by that, all right? So in here is a schematic before I show you what, how I'm getting all of this to work. This is an SPI, USB to SPI converter, which is the MCP2210, which I've already have a video of how I designed this. And this is the ADS1234. So it works through an SPI mode. Uh, what I have over here is the data out, the clock. This is the power up and down. And then speed, gain, 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 gain. All of this is generally, uh, you have to connect the digital inputs. You cannot not connect the digital inputs. Uh, in this particular schematic, I've left it, um, unconnected but in reality it depends on how you're you know because uh to give you to give you a sense you know if the speed is is ground is, is connected to ground then you'll have 10 samples per uh 10 samples per second and if it's connected to uh to the five volts then it's can or to the uh, upper rail or digital voltage then it would be um i think it's 100 samples or 80 samples uh, per second this is analog and this is digital. This should not be three point. I mean, I put 3.3 .3 volts on the PCB, but it's actually analog. Uh, one is the, sorry, the 3.3 is digital voltage and analog voltage. So digital voltage is for communicating and, and configuring a device for the digital side of things. The analog is powering the analog side of things. So that's why you have the analog voltage power and the digital voltage power. In this particular case, they both are connected to five volts. Uh, the documentation allows me to do that. And then you have ground. So. This is SPI. So in SPI, you generally have four circuits, but you can also, but the main thing over here that, uh, that, that I'm interested in is the clock and the data reading. So that's what we're going to, that's what we're connected over here. 
This is a load cell. A load cell will have four wires. One wire will be connected to the power, one will be connected to the ground, and then this will be the differential uh, pair kind of where you'll have plus and minus, the signal plus and minus, and the difference in voltage is what this particular circuit is going to amplify. So that's what we have over here. It's a simple circuitry, uh, nothing too complicated, but there's a lot of things that needs to be connected. You cannot leave any of these floating. Uh, so the speed I have connected to ground, uh, the gain one and gain two I've connected to the upper rail because I need to for man maximum amplification. It, I think gives you a gain of 128 uh, because load cell readings have, are in the mini mini volt milli volt mini volt milli volt range. Uh, so it's important to amplify it so that you know I can get a I can read um, the the every single voltage that's that's changing. Uh, I have a higher precision. I won't say higher precision, but I can read more of the data. But the, but if I have more gain, then it's also not necessarily precise. Uh, so that's where the gain comes in. So the gain can give you, you know, from zero gain to all the way to 128 and everything in between. Um, not everything in between, but, you know, zero, 64. Um, I think there's something else and there's 128. And then A1, A2 helps me select the four channels. So there's four channels. I can have four load cells connected to this or any other device or analog device that I wanted, you know, basically do an analog to digital conversion um, that will allow me to do this. Uh, so I have four. So A1, A2 allows me to basically uh, select a channel. So if I connect A1 and A2 to uh, the ground, then I'm then I'm using channel one. So in this particular case, my channel one is, you know, ADC2, channel two is here, channel three, channel four. Uh, I need to do a little bit more of a better labeling, but I had to place it this way because of the way the wires and the pins were connected to this IC. That allowed me, it, it just seemed better, you know, to have, you know, the layout just seemed uh, more natural to have uh, it based close to where the pins were. So that's how I designed it. But in this case, I'm using ADC4, which is connected to the last pin, uh, or last um, pin over here. And for that, I have to put A1 and A2 for, for using channel number four. I put A1 and A2 connected to the power rail. All right. So let's go back and again, look at my uh, schematic right now. So I'm just gonna adopt this view. All right. So based on what we just showed you, there are these four channels that you I don't know whether you can see, but uh, at least from the PCB which I have over here, um, these are the four channels, and these four channels are, uh, and I'm only using the fourth one. So we're going to use this one, which is already placed over here. Um, this is the load cell, and these are the readings. And now we're going to basically get started working with the device itself. So I can control my SPI based on the MCP2210. Uh, I can use the uh, the graphical user interface for connecting it so that I can interface and, and talk to it without using a microcontroller. That's the reason why I created these devices so that I can easily access this. And here I've got my load, uh, sorry, my logic analyzer connected. So this allows me to basically um, do the reading. So what I'm going to do right now I'm going to uh, try to place this, you know, somewhere close by. And right now, if you really see, every, even my voltmeter is zero. Uh, let me, uh, uh, all right. So here I have my logic analyzer. And in here, I have my USB to SPI. Um, the graphical user interface for me to talk to the SPI, USB to SPI that is there in uh, connected or, already to my computer and that's connected to the load cell so that we can communicate. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to just uh, basically um, do something like this. Uh, let's see if this works. All right. So uh, let's get started. Um, I'm just going to clear up all these symbols. Doesn't matter. And so right now, everything is zero. So if I basically click play on my logic analyzer, which is recording as we speak, everything is zero. There's nothing that we can see. So in order for me for it to work, I have to enable the logic one. As soon as I do logic one and I click transfer, I'm going to just start playing again. The clock starts. This is the, the data starts. But this is the indication, basically, if I stop this over here right now, that's basically saying that the ADC has got data ready. And if you can really see, say from, this is a 40 milliseconds, uh, 50 milliseconds, 60 milliseconds. Uh, so my sample rate right now 
is from three seconds to four seconds, right? So in so between uh, um, so between two seconds and three seconds, that means I have around under under samples. Uh, so this is basically I've connected my um, speed to uh, not to ground but to the power rail. So that means I'm getting a hundred samples per second. All right, so uh, that's the way I've connected in this particular case. Um, and now let's start to send in a signal. So what I'm going to do over here is I am going to send in um, a signal. So in your, I've got you got to put an SPI mode one. This is one of the reasons why when I talked to the Texas Instrument engineers, they were like, okay, and I was sending SPI mode zero. It was SPI mode one, the number of bytes, and let's try to send a simple, you know, transfer SPI. Uh, let me see if it's, if we do this and then we say transfer SPI. Okay. And here we've transferred SPI. And as soon as I've transferred SPI, this is basically the three bytes I've sent and we get some form of a reading. All right. This is the form of reading. Now I'm not basically manipulating the load cell. Now there are certain issues that I need to clear up. There was some soldering issues that I had. I'm basically telling you that, yeah, this was not perfect. Um, I had to like, you know, read solder certain parts of the component. Uh, I'm not changing the load cell reading and you'll say, why is it 384? Those, that's something that I don't know yet. Why my reading on the mic on the, uh, I've clearly now changed, uh, the pins, uh, why it's showing 384 earlier before there are these few issues that I need to solve and resolve. So I'll probably, you know, once I clean everything up, I'll probably create a blog on this and show, you know, how everything works. But so far, the, the, the system and the, and the setup seems to be pretty straightforward. Um, I have no uh, issues uh, so far, uh, but I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how I can really apply and use it more practically because now the data has come in in two's complement and it's giving me, you know, a bigger number. And I got to sort of interpret that into something that's meaningful so that, you know, I can get similar to what my, you know, multimeter over here is showing. So I still need to do that. You know, what is the 70 FFFF? And I need to basically create a uh, create some correlation between what the actual voltage is out here. Uh, and adding the gain factor and all that stuff in order for me to make sense of the numbers. So I'm here right now. And I thought it would be a nice video to me to show you, you know, what the setup look like. Uh, where am I in the progress of, you know, this ADS 1234? Um, and what it would look like once you fabricate the device and how you get it working. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, uh, one more thing before uh, the video ends is when it comes to designing this stuff, I also have um, created. A, so what I've done is I also created another forum just recently where I was not able to particularly get this work in. And uh, sometimes the data sheet is a lot, you know, too much to read. Uh, again, and, you know, sometimes it confuses me. So I just go on to the data sheet, go to go to the engineers and I just try to use it as much as I can because it's, it's the service is free. Uh, and in this particular case, I basically have written another forum um, over here, uh, created another forum, another topic in the forum, and I basically posted. So I show you shared links to the forum so that if you have any questions, you definitely can read what I've written. Um, this is, you know, I think it's very important that everybody uh, in some form or the other should uh, basically be able to uh, interact with uh, the manufacturers in a much more meaningful way. If you can just use the device, if they can use their, their support uh, facilities and you can get a lot of, a uh, lot of good information from them directly. So that's all there is for us to this video. Uh, I hope you like it. Um, please subscribe, please comment below. Um, and share, uh, if you, you know, think that is, uh, that others might, you know, benefit from this. Um, and most importantly, you know, um, yeah, subscribe. You know, I just, I'm trying to fund my whole project by myself. This is not, you know, sponsored content. I literally buy everything by myself in my own pocket. Uh, it's an expensive hobby at this point in time. Uh, you know, getting all the, getting all the components and fabricating it and designing it and, and all the cool stuff that goes with it. So nevertheless, you know, your support is, you know, really, really uh, helpful. Um, but until next time, take care.